Hey, Joe here for PremierGuitar.com. We're at the New York Amp Show 2009, checking out stuff from Synaptic Amplification. And I've got Steve O'Connor here with me. Steve, what's going on, man? Good. How are you doing? Oh, it's all good. Just going from room to room, checking out all these cool amps, learning about new companies, a lot of new companies here this year. You're one as well. Tell me, what's this all about? Well, I've come to show my Pure Drive SE model of amplifier. It's uh, the first model that, that Synaptic Amps has put out. Um, and it's, uh, it's really designed to, 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 to give home studio musicians an amp that it will be a professional grade single-handed amp. I suppose we started out with the idea of, of really liking and appreciating how useful the Champ was um, as a home studio amp. But, uh, you know, it's a student-level model inherently and fundamentally. So our idea here was to make a serious approach at a, at a single-ended amp using the finest components we can and just wiring them very simply and directly. So there's very little extra parts. Anytime we find a part that we can eliminate, I always try to. So we're just the very direct signal flow. I mean, it really just stems right down to the whole idea of synaptic amps, that we're trying to make a very fundamental connection between the musician and the drivers, and hopefully have it come back to their ears the way that they imagined it. So we're not really trying to color people's tone too much. Just keep it pure and simple. Talk about tube selection. You, you, you mentioned your, your old school. I'm, I'm looking at Mullards here. Uh, you know, how do you go about uh, choosing your tubes? Well, what's really nice about a Class A single lens lamp like this um, is that you can swap tubes very freely. Um, being set up to run a 25 watt uh, tube gives you a lot of options um, between the, the Tung Saw 5881 on the small side up to a, a 6550. This amp can pretty much just swap in any tube and run it adequately. Um, but one feature that we've incorporated here is the adjustable cathode bias. And it's something I think relatively unique about our amps. Because not only can we swap in different tubes, but now we can really precision align that bias for the tube. So for instance, if we had the amp set up with a 6550, we want to get as many watts out of it as we can. And this is a 30 watt tube, so we would probably want to adjust in order to be able to get every little last ounce of decibel out of that. If we then swap back in a 5881, it would tend to be running a little bit hot, which is fine if you say, I got a boatload of 5881s and just run them, yeah? But, uh, yeah, otherwise you can adjust. So you can really fine tune that. And another thing that we really try to focus on is just the quality of parts. When I'm building an amp, I'm always thinking about how to make it so that it's going to last 50 years. I warranty them for 10, but I want to be able to, if in order to warranty them for 10, I want to know they're going to last for 50. So I've got these nice military pots, uh, handmade Jensen capacitors. I've tried to, and as much as possible, I'm trying to, to keep American parts whenever they're available. I'll never turn my back on an American part as long as it's available. So we got the Sprig Atom Electrolytics, uh, Mercury Magnetics Transformers from California. What does this amp cost? Well, I've, I've set the price for this show at $22.75, but the truth is I didn't come here to sell stuff. I came here to meet people and get a nice experience, learn a lot about amps, and I've been able to bounce a lot of my ideas off other builders. It was nice to be able to meet uh, Joel, Joel Jones, I think, from Simple Amps. Yeah, we saw you in there. Yeah, I was poking around on his amps while you guys were filming, indeed. But, uh, yeah, it was just, it's just nice to see other people. I mean, his approach and my approach is fundamentally completely different. I mean, he, his, I love the way that he wires everything point to point direct like that. But I really like the ability to be able to customize my amps after I make them. So all of these standardized terminal lugs, I've got my little box full of capacitors here and I'll, I'll never call an amp done just because I finished wiring it. I always keep swapping them in. So that amp there for instance I designed for my friend uh, Dan T around his Telecaster so it's very fitting that we have a Telecaster to perform with it today. Yeah and we just we just grabbed this guy he's hanging out here at the show. Sir tell me your name. My name is Gordon Popin. And, and tell me about uh, this telly you're playing here. This is a homemade telly uh, kind of bought the body for ten dollars, found the neck, put it all together. It's got Steve Mars, DiMarzio pickup in the lead position, as well as a fast track telly. Um, pickguard was cut out of one sheet of uh, 
mother of toilet seat, perloid, <laughs> and has some coil taps with it and a freeway towel. So what do you think of this amp? You know, we just kind of grabbed you by the collar and said, hey, dude, demo this amp for us. So you've, you've been kind of plucking along here as we've been talking about it. What, what are your thoughts one, yeah, one to put the, you on the spot now? Okay, one of the things that, uh, that you're looking for in, in different amplifiers is, does it give you a diversified tone? Is it just all in one box and you're just blasting on top or are there subtleties in the amps? And one of the nice things about this is that you can actually use the lower volume for very much jazz comp and like I was doing for you. And at the same point in time where you have it turned up and you're turning up. <laughs> Nice sustain carries out, so it's it's good that you actually have both sides of the spectrum when you need them and when you're going to use them. Cool. Well, thanks for your thoughts, man, and thanks for playing. And uh, so, welcome to the New York Amp Show. We put you on the spot. We grab a guy and have him talk about it while you're standing here. And I mean, you guys just met, so. You know, one of the great things about the show, I mean, it's all about the experience. You're learning, you're checking things out, and people are getting to know new amps and new people. Uh, your, your thoughts on the show so far being here as an exhibitor? Well, it's definitely been a good opportunity for me. The truth is I haven't spent very much time in my own exhibit today. I've just been checking walking everything out. the train wrecks, the dumbles. It's <laughs> been quite an experience. I mean, I've dreamed about these amps, and I've read all about them, and I've studied their circuits, but now here they are. You can actually touch them and taste them. So, I, you know, it's, it's one thing. It's nice to be able to give other people a chance to, to try my own amps as well, Great. be able to get feedback. Yeah. So if people want to find out more about your stuff, is there a website set up? They can go online, yeah. You know, and if anybody out there then is good at making websites, I could use a little hand, I suppose. <laughs> I have enough other things to learn besides making websites. But, um, yeah, uh, www.synapticamps.com. Okay. And, um, yeah, we are out there. Cool, cool. All right. Thanks for your time, man. Thanks for uh, showing us around uh, your, your amp chassis here. Yeah. All right. I'm Joe Coffey. You're watching PremierGuitar.com.